Hi guys, this is Heidi Rocky of Rocky's Rad Resources, back again with our math mini lessons taught from our RV. From where we are to where you are, learning happens everywhere. Today we're going to talk about attacking a word problem. In our last episode, we talked about how math is related to real life, real life situations. And word problems give us that chance to apply all of those number pieces of math to the real world situations. Whether it's a shopping problem or a travel problem or a cooking problem, all of those word problems give us that chance to really apply what we know. But for some people, word problems tend to be scary. And so I've developed a list of steps so that they're not so scary. And you can see that they're just a real life situation written down in words. Here's our word problem. And the very first thing that we're going to do is read every single word. So let's do it. Carla has 20 apples and 25 oranges. She needs to put the fruit into baskets for the teachers at her school. There are nine teachers at her school and each teacher needs the same amount of fruit in their baskets. How many apples and how many oranges does each teacher receive? Next, you're going to underline the question which you see I've already done. How many apples and how many oranges does each teacher receive? Knowing what the question is asking of you is extremely important to solving the problem. Next, you're going to circle the key words and facts. There are going to be lots of numbers and lots of facts in most of your word problems. Some of them are helpful and some of them aren't. So take the time to circle the key ones, the ones that are helpful. Like Carla needs 20 apples. She has 25 oranges. There are nine teachers at her school and all of the teachers have to have the same amount of fruit. If I don't know those things, I'm not going to be able to solve the problem. And by circling those things, I am able to do the next step, which is determine what the problem is asking of me. That I can see in my head the nine little baskets lined up for the teachers, each with fruit in them. I can see the box of fruit next to them with 20 apples and 25 oranges. I've got an idea of what's going on. Next, I'm going to choose the best strategy to actually solve this problem, and we're gonna talk about that here just in a minute. Once I've solved the problem, I know the best strategy, I'm going to solve the problem, and I'm going to work through it, showing all of my work and never erasing. One of the most important things to know about solving a word problem is that you never ever erase your work. Generally, when we solve a problem, it's not, oh, I did this and I did it wrong. It's, I thought about it this way, that's not the correct answer, so let my thinking continue on. And so while it continues on, I don't want to lose that little bit of thinking that I had, even if it took me down the wrong road. So instead of erasing, I'm going to draw a line through it, I'm going to make an X. Once I do have an answer, I'm going to go ahead and check my work, make sure that my work answers the question. That's why we underline the question. So if my question says how many apples and oranges each teacher receives and the answer that I came up with was Carla, then I probably haven't answered the question. I need to go back and check, figure out what I did wrong. Once I am solid and I'm serious, this is my answer, you need to take some time to justify your answer. Whether it's in writing the way we do in Problem Solving Path or just by telling a partner or explaining it to your parent, take some time to think about how would I justify, how would I say, this is my answer and this is why. Because 95% of the time, if you can tell me why that is your answer, then your answer's right. If you can't tell me why, that's when we start getting all kinds of wrong answers that don't make any sense. Okay? So we said we'd talk about problem solving strategies and this is the time to go ahead and glue this paper into your interactive notebook. This gives you six of the key problem solving strategies. There are other problem solving strategies but these are the most common and many others can fall under these. So the most common problem solving strategies are making a table or a list, organizing your information, drawing a picture or acting it out with manipulatives, actually getting out the cubes and the beans, writing a number sentence that's also called an equation, finding a pattern that helps you to make sense of the question, making a good guess, and then checking. You can never just guess. That's not a problem-solving strategy. But if you guess and check, 
figure out if you're close and use that guess in order to get yourself closer to the next step, that is then helpful. That is a great problem solving strategy. Working backwards, starting at the end of the question and seeing if you can work your way back to figure out the answer. All of these are problem solving strategies that can be used over and over with lots of different questions, different word problems, but also some of your regular math problems that just have numbers. Okay. Now there are many ways to solve a problem. There's no one right way to solve any given problem. So we're going to look at how each of these problem solving strategies would work with our problem that we had before, Carla and her apples and oranges. So I'm going to go ahead and do what we did before, underline the question, circle those key facts, make sure we know what we're doing, and now it's time to choose a strategy. Let's say we decided to make a table or a list with this information. Well, I could make, list out the facts I know. I've got 20 apples, 25 oranges, put that together, that's 45 pieces of fruit. I've got nine teachers. Now I can start to look at maybe I need to do some division. Okay, I've listed out my information. I can also organize that same information in a table format. I can make myself a number sentence. 20 apples plus 25 oranges equals n, some number. That's my total number of fruit, right? And then n divided by 9, which is my number of teachers, gives me my answer of how much fruit does each teacher get in their baskets. I could guess and check. Again, I know that 20 plus 25 is 45 pieces of fruit. And I know that I have 9 baskets to fill. So 9 times some number of fruit is going to get me to that 45 pieces. I can do, all right, well, let me run my 9 facts. I know 9 times 8 72, way too big. 9 times 4 is 36, way too low. Well, 9 times 5 is 45. There we go. I've got my answer. I'm guessing in order to help myself get closer to the answer, not just guessing randomly. I could draw a picture, and I'm sure a lot of you all are much better artists than I am. I simply drew my nine baskets and put fives inside them, but you can easily draw out your apples, draw out your oranges, so you can see how many each person's getting. Um, finding a pattern is a great way to solve, especially a problem like this, because this problem gets tricky when you realize, wait a minute, neither 20 nor 25 are divisible by nine. So actually, even though each teacher will get five pieces of fruit, they won't all get the same five pieces. Two, um, if you look at my pattern here, two of your teachers are gonna get three apples and two oranges, and the other seven are going to get three oranges and two apples. But they're all getting five pieces of fruit. You've solved the question. Okay, so patterns are really helpful. Uh, working backwards, again, knowing I've got those nine teachers that need fruit and they need a certain number of fruit, and I don't know what it is, but whatever nine times that number of teachers is gonna get me those 20 apples and the 25 oranges, and then taking it and working backwards. It's another great way to solve a problem, okay? It is reflection time, guys. Take a look in the mirror and think about what we've just learned. Take some time. Reflect on it in your notebook. Choose one strategy. You can write a paragraph with five sentences telling me how to solve a word problem. You can write your own word problem and then solve it using two of those strategies on your, there are many ways to solve a problem sheet. You can create a song that explains the various problem solving strategies to someone else. Remember your audience here is generally someone younger than you. Um, you can create a Venn diagram that compares and contrasts two of the different problem solving strategies, or you can create an example word problem that would be best solved for each of those six problem solving strategies that we've talked about today. Don't forget when you're doing your reflection, take time to show thinking about this week's concept, follow all of the guidelines, and make sure this is going to help you when you come back to this topic later on. Don't forget that all of these word problem strategies can also be used in your problem solving paths. Take time to underline those questions, circle the keywords, show your work without erasing, justify your answer. This will work you through and you'll cover your rubric with ease. All right guys, thanks for watching. For more math mini lessons taught from my RV, from where I am to where you are, because learning happens anywhere, feel free to follow our YouTube channel, follow our blog, 
um, come back and see us and for any of the sheets that were showcased in today's lesson the links are down in the description thanks and have a great day